Hello, I hope you all are doing so well. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, so, so I have so many things um, in the energy, in the field um, that I want to talk about and address, and yet um, always such a limited stream comes through, so I hope I'm able to cover it all. Um, um, but clearly, we are in a time of, it's a divine shift in the energies. Um, what we are embodying, what we are working through, um, and what our physical experience then is encompassing. And I just want to remind everyone, um, and I think this is the same message um, that I put out back in March um, when we first started with the lockdowns. Um, and I, I don't remember what my message was at that time, but I do know um, this is what it is. No matter what happens in the physical world, the work remains the same. It does not matter who wins this election. The physical realm is just a representation of the underlying energetics and where we are getting caught up in the drama of the situations is where we are bouncing out of our own energy, bouncing out of our rooting in to our energetic field here in the earth realm and being swayed and moved by the current that is here. Current events, right? Same thing. Where's the current moving and pulling you in a direction, in a place that is contrasting to being rooted into your soul light and into your field? The system itself is essentially fucked. So, so where are we trying to come into that system and trying to fix that system, that system needs to come apart. Where are we standing on one side or another and saying this is right and that is wrong and this is the way it should be and, and, and that shouldn't be that way. None of it should exist. And yet it's a representation of the distortion that's here in this realm that we are here to not dismantle, but we are here to support energetically the dismantling of those systems, which means you hold into your light, you hold into your space, and you hold into the truth of who you are, no matter what is going on around you. And this has always been the work. This has always been the way that we work. It's always been how we navigate energies. And so this space within time is no different. Where are we forgetting our divinity? Where are we forgetting our sacredness? Where are we forgetting our magic? And our ability to control our own reality through this internal connection to our soul, to our source. Where are we becoming a part of this very system we are here to support the dismantling of? It's, it's no different than when I would talk about the Dark Mother, right? Distorted energy, anytime you feel it coming into your system, into your field, is to say, you are distortion and you need to go. And this is the truth of my light. It's the same thing. No matter if it's Dark Mother or dark reality within the earth, the work, the process, the way we move through it is the same. It's fundamental energy techniques. And, and this is one of the things that I am seeing so clearly now. We have devised our understanding of how energy works based on what we are seeing in the physical. And so we're almost I want to use the expression back filtering based on our vision, based on our 
physical experience based on the material reality, we're trying to describe and interpret how energy actually moves. And that's incorrect. And so wherever we are looking at the physical reality and trying to understand as a way of understanding the underlying way to manifest energetically, to create energetically, we're going to be creating out of distortion. based on these conclusions that we are drawing. And this is black box programming. I've talked about this in the past too, where you know, you're, you're looking at the input and you're looking at the output and you're drawing conclusions based on those things. We're not looking inside the box to see what's really happening, what kind of machinations are going on. Because when we change and we tweak the input, and then we get a totally different output and it doesn't make logical sense. And then we keep tweaking this and not getting what we need and desire. It's because we're not looking internally in the energetic system, right? So, so there is basic mismanagement and misunderstanding of the mechanics of energy. So, so one of the ways this is becoming um, very clear to me, um, we talk about codependency. Um, and again, these are these empathic natures. This is the distortion that has been put on us as light beings. We come here, we try to understand who we are to resolve our issues and we go to information, people, um, communities, structures and systems to try to understand who we are and how we work. And yet all of that has been defined through a distorted system that also disregards the true underlying mechanics of energy. So codependency, we've all been labeled codependents, right? You are with a narcissist, that means you're codependent. That means you give too much. That means you love the other person more than you love yourself. That means you don't know how to love yourself. That means you keep giving yourself away. In theory, that's exactly what it is. That's what it looks like. If we're looking at the actual physical experience, that makes sense. Unfortunately, it's a narrative we have created to stay sane, to understand why we suffer in this physical reality. It makes sense. We've created these ideas, concepts, steps, ways of managing this, ways of trying to root this out. Um, in order to survive. It's a survival mechanism and it's not true. Because what is actually happening with that, what I have recognized, when I am with someone who we could label a narcissist and I'm behaving in a way which we could label codependently, what is actually happening is that we are not operating from the same energetic level, resonance, skill set, whatever you want to call it. Um, in my mind, in my heart, perhaps I know what this other individual is capable of. And I see the truth of their soul and who they are. And that's what I'm connecting to, right? Which through the human, causes me to do, say, and be things in relation to that vision that I have about this soul. And yet this soul, perhaps, unable to see their wounding, accept their wounding, know how to work through their wounding, whatever it may be, doesn't mean that I overgive. In most instances, it's actually that the other person cannot receive and why can we not receive? Because the wounding is so great. We have identified so greatly with the wounding as an identity, as a mask, whatever we want to call it. Were we to be able to receive, that means we have to drop the wounding and the story and the victimhood and the martyrdom. And all of these things we have tried to tell ourselves are true so that we can stay sane, so that we can live with ourselves, so that we can exist in a distorted reality. But what's also happening because I am 
trying to energetically connect to something that is rejecting my energy. What I have to understand as well is that this is a mirror, right? Everything that we encounter in this reality that we are triggered by is because there is something inside of us that we are still not seeing and understanding. And so while it's true that I may be overgiving, trying to connect with something that doesn't truly want to connect to me at the level that I see possible, the potential that I'm feeling, it also means that I'm not fully understanding my own energy and my power and what it is worth. And so what is the correction to that, right? How do we, well, we go back to our hole, we go back to our cave and we isolate and we say, fuck these narcissists, they're all out to get me. I'm so sensitive, I'm an empath and people take advantage of me. And all of that is true because I put myself there. What I have found though, is when I connect with someone who is aware of their own truth of who they are, they are actually able to see the truth of who I am. And so what I am finding now is that ability of another being to recognize what I cannot even feel and see truly in my own self is showing me where I have all this armor up still, where I have not been able to receive the truth of who I am. And so connecting with a narcissist reinforces my own disempowerment, the, the way that I am disempowering myself, the way that I am not truly understanding and seeing myself as source light. So in many ways it is a trap, but, but to get out of that trap is not, well, okay, now I need to stand here and know my worth, right? Because we can know it in our mind. We know it as a thing. It, it feels logical. It's, it's understandable. To actually embody that through the physical form, completely different story. We cannot do this work on our own. This is why unions are imminent. This is why unions are here to hold this energy to stay in this power of truth, of the light. Because once a soul comes in that can fully recognize and see you, it's an eternal conversation of energetic transference. And rather than struggling through issues and feeling like, well, now there's this problem and now there's that problem and life is an eternal trying to balance out the problems. This is linear time space, which is an illusion and not reality. And yet our entire relationship structure is based on this specifically to keep souls out of union with one another, because that is the powerhouse of this realm. That was always the design. That was always the intention. So when you encounter another soul that can fully receive you, that is when you start to receive and fully see, understand, embody your own soul light to a level we cannot comprehend, we cannot understand on our own. And maybe this is not true for all souls, right? Um, there's always that. However, what I am seeing, what I am experiencing is that there are, there is armor, right, inside of me that I was not able to see before um, until this energy came in and what had to occur first for me was something else outside of me being able to witness uh, the truth of my energy and my light. But in order, in order for me to experience that and to receive that, I first had to recognize where I was not fully seeing and opening my eyes to the truth of this other individual. So 
Unfortunately, it's hard to explain because it's not a step-by-step -step process, right? It's not first I see this and then first this happens and then this happens, right? It's, it's a constant cycle of communication and movement of energy. It's a constant conversation of harmonic waves that come into the field to adjust and sift through and release the distortion that has become densified within these fields of sacred partnership. And again, sacred partnership is not just in an intimate relationship. It's in all of our relationships. And yet the way we break it down, the way we see it most clearly is generally through the intimate relationship. Because you have to show up fully naked and vulnerable. And in fact, the energy of this doesn't allow for anything else. Full and complete authenticity and transparency. And I've said this in the past, right? The light leaves no stone unturned. I had no idea uh, how true that was. And it's a bit disturbing the level of refinement and clarity and truth um, that we have to be in in order to shift out of the distorted relationships. So this is all a part of the great mystery. There's no way to explain this through human language at this time. But what we will find What is most true is that we have been trying to hook up with the wrong kind of energy fields and trying to force a narrative and a story based on what we are internally feeling to be true. We know the possibility, we know the potential, but we are connecting with a soul or an energy um, that is not there, that is not available, that is still within its own wounded space. Uh, and yet when we connect in with someone who is open to these shifts, it's a completely different ballgame. All of these stories and narratives and labels lose credibility. They don't make any sense any longer. And this is what I'm saying, this whole construct that we beat ourselves up with, you know, oh, my self-worth and my shame and this is why I can't be re in relationship and, and I just attract narcissists and I'm too sensitive and too much and too loud and too all of this. Um, yes, in the distortion, that is true. And then we also have to recognize, well, what is true about distortion and darkness? Distortion and darkness has taken the organic codes and reversed them. So if something is true in distortion, it's to know there's also an organic version of that, which is even more powerful. And this is the great secret, right? That we keep wanting to disown is that as powerful and as triggered and as attacked as we feel by darkness, we are so much more than that. In fact, the darkness has based its attacks on what we hold within. And so a vital part of this process is to go into the wounding, to go into the emotions, to go into the places where we feel trapped and stuck and blocked. Because these are these compression points, these node points in the field where our field has been collapsed and folded up, right? So, so this pain and suffering that we feel here in this point in time, it's not to say, okay, let me let go of the anger. Let me let go of the sadness. I need to process this out. No, you have to go deep into the mystery of it. You have to surrender into it. Allow source to show you clues to bring ideas up through your mind in order to connect into the deeper story because we are not just processing trauma from this lifetime and we are not just processing trauma from past lifetimes this is the convergence of all trauma fields this is the mechanics of the trauma fields right this is a system that has been designed to entrap the soul in a body not just human bodies, there are other forms of bodies throughout the universe where this is also happening. So to come into these emotions that we're feeling, we're triggered by something, somebody says something and we feel it ripping through us. 
yes, we have to look in this lifetime. Okay, what is this relating to? What comes to mind when this is happening? And then also it's reverse, like we are reverse engineering the trauma field. So um, I'm going to use this as an example. So, so the other thing that's happening right now, um, the energies of the Essene, um, which I know people will say, okay, that's a bloodline. It's a, it's a lineage. Um, I don't feel to call it that. I feel it's a clan. It's a tribal energy. Um, I feel it, it is a group of souls that came in to work together. Um, I believe that at the time of the crucifixion, there was a rip in the energies um, that allowed for massive distortion to come in and alter timelines, histories, memories, back and forth throughout time. So that we can't look at history linearly, linearly and say, okay, well, here we were invaded by negative forces. And from there on out, here's how it rolled out in the earth experience. There's no timeline that we can look at that will show us the truth of the distortion because the distortion came in and affected in both directions. So we can't look at dates and times and say, okay, this happened here and it affected what in the past prior to the crucifixion was not distorted right? There was another linear experience of that undistorted energy that also played out, right? But once we came locked into this time space through the crucifixion, it altered even what was organic in the past, right? So this is why we can have all of this existing simultaneously here through our experience, through the human condition. We say, yes, this is distorted, but then there's also this part of me that knows that there's something else that is organic and true, I suppose this is sometimes what people will call parallel realities, but it's, it's not the same thing. Um, so, so what's happening now? Um, i trying to think of the best way to describe this energy of the Essenes. Um, this, is, this is the trauma and distortion and the attack on the light the light embodiment, this process that was brought in here to be anchored in for all time and space throughout all ranges of eternity, throughout all dimensional constructs. And so what is happening, it's, it's very visceral. Um, we are clearing distortion trauma that happened then, which is causing distortion and trauma that happened now. And yet, much of the correction for the past trauma is actually in this reality. We are walking through the trauma in this body and the, the emotional experience of pain and suffering, even though we can't physically fully relate it to things that are happening in our life, the correction is here in this timeline, reality space, whatever we wanna call this moment that we are embodying. And we are going back and correcting so so wherever this distortion has come in through the crucifixion there's like parallel right running vertically like this right at every trauma point and this is what's so beautiful about this time if you feel you can't if you can feel into this you know this to be true we are doing amazing brilliant massive amounts of light work so sacred and so divine right now and yet the distraction of what's going on in the world, keeping us from fully embodying the excitement and the sacredness of this experience right now. So, so I wanna talk about um, the story of Elizabeth. So, um, so many of us, right? We try to, who was I in a past life? Like, was I Cleopatra? Was I so-and-so? I feel so connected to these energies. What we have to understand, these are collective energies many of us have of us have a connection to this many of us would feel like we were there in that moment and and that's not untrue um we have very limited understanding of how a soul tribe works what the over soul is let's say who are we am i a huge soul that's been split into parts is my soul actually all my soul tribe members that we all have the physical experience 
our, our individual physical experiences, and yet we're all part of the same greater soul. So that energetically, even though I'm in this body moving through this, my tribe member going through a different physical experience, I'm deeply connected to that energy and it resonates and I understand what they're saying even though my physical experience has been something completely different. I often see um, like, a, like a pomegranate, right? There's all these little seeds but they're connected through this energy, this web, this, um, this membrane, right? And that's what the soul tribe really is. And, and is it really a soul tribe or is that the soul? It's one enormous soul and we split into these different experiences. We're having different physical experiences, but simultaneously, energetically working through the same things here. And why we need to connect to community and why we need to connect to each other. And it is not a joke. This is very serious. Physically, we have to connect with one another. And this is what it's coming to. And yet this is the agenda of the time is to keep us all split apart for all eternity. And yet the work is to connect wherever we feel resistance to connect, to move through it. It's vital. It's a part of who we are. It's why we came here. And this is the work. So, so the story of Elizabeth, Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. Elizabeth was, I believe in her sixties when she conceived her child up until that point, she carried great shame at that time conceiving a child was considered a gift it was considered a blessing god shone down upon you you were deemed worthy of carrying his light his seed so she carried great shame until she finally conceived and felt blessed recognized seen So even as we talk through this, we can feel the remnants of this within us. Great shame because we're not being seen and not being validated for who we are, for who we know to be true within us. And yet awaiting some outside force to crown us, to give us permission, to tell us who we are so that we can know the truth of who we are. At the time that she conceived, no one knew that Mary was going to be the vessel for the energy of Yeshua. And yet when Elizabeth met with Mary, there was a, a recognition through the child she was carrying within, that soul recognized Mary's energy. And that energy of that child moved through Elizabeth's body. And Elizabeth was moved to tell Mary that she actually would be receiving, would be carrying this birth within her. And yet even Elizabeth didn't know, or they didn't know. It's like when we get these impulses too, right? These words just fall out of our mouths. We have no idea why we're saying these things. It's like the spirit moves through you, source moves through you. We channel, whatever we want to call it. It was the same experience when they connected. And so in those times, becoming pregnant was celebrated. It was considered a blessing. You were blessed to have conceived. And we come into this time and space now. Conceiving of light, conceiving of energy, conceiving of a child is considered traumatic. And this is really what's on the table for the womb space for the divine feminine energy right now. This trauma of being trapped in childbirth and how this whole system has gotten skewed. Life 
and light are interchangeable words. Bringing life into this world is bringing light into this world. And yet there is so much fear for women, young women, not having the support they need, not having the relationship they need, not having the partner that they need, not having the family support that they need to bring new life, new light into this world. And so for many of us, the answer was to terminate pregnancies, um, to protect ourselves from ever becoming pregnant in the first place. If we did become pregnant, it was not celebrated. It was not joyous. It was traumatic. Oh my God, where am I going to put a child? Oh my God, how am I going to do this? Oh my God, this is a curse. Oh my God, my life is over. Recognizing that conception and birth and the sacredness of this experience and the entire process of pregnancy and deliverance has been ripped from us and how we've been tortured and traumatized by it. And not just women. For men as well, the idea of having another mouth to feed, the idea of having to support this. We are bringing in a new life into this world. We are fully responsible for this flesh and blood, this creation, and not feeling that there is a safe space for this to happen. The sacredness of this experience has been overwritten. So this pain, uh, many of us are feeling right now in this womb space, this great sorrow, creation is the ultimate form of expression. And when we cannot sit in the joy of our creation, that kills the soul. To know that your ability to create and bring in new life is labeled as a curse, as a danger to society, It's so offensive to spirit and to the source of who we are. And so if we go back to the story of Elizabeth, the child that she and her husband gave birth to was John the Baptist. According to the stories, Ultimately, he was beheaded. They would have been alive for that experience. So that even if there was an organic energy here where this child was supposed to come in and fulfill a mission and a process, the rip in time in the energy field in the fabric of our reality would have created distortion around this. So that when their child was killed, tortured, traumatized, that energy has been carried forward now. How can we bring a child into this world to have them suffer, to have them killed? That child's essence, what they were here to bring in, that light, he was targeted and attacked for that very reason. The essence of who he was became the reason for his death. And so the shame and the guilt that we carry for bringing life into this world that ultimately is going to meet its demise. How do we explain this in the human mind? We can't. And it's so traumatizing. And again, this is the system of the trauma fields that have been designed, right? We can't process that in the human mind. We shut down, essentially shutting us off from the own, from our own truth of our light within. That life is eternal. The physical experience of life is fleeting. Our bodies are temporary. 
our energy, our experiences will continue to live on beyond this human form. And yet the only way we can make sense of these traumas is to say, well, that's life. We all die. Some of us sooner than others. Some of it unfortunate. Some of it painful and traumatic. How else can we explain it? These are the trauma fields. It limits our constraints within our consciousness. And, and this is the energy of this clan, of this Essene tribe that's coming up now, which is that if you can conceive of yourself as more than this physical experience, if you can dream a different dream, that is unlimited reality that we can create here. So we are in the midst of an enormous convergence through our energy fields. This isn't about just processing old trauma or just stepping into the light body. It is the whole experience of creation in and of itself. The whole experience of how creation got distorted. Or we can even say the experience of darkness itself that void space, that antithesis of light. And this is no small thing. Um, so where we are carrying shame, guilt, pain, sorrow, suffering around childbirth, childbearing, um, bringing life into this world This is huge because the one thing that these energies want us to forget, to move away from, to deny, is that we are actually creator beings. And that the movement of energy through us, the creation of new life in physical form is divine and sacred. And yet, through our human experience, we keep labeling it as traumatic, which pulls us back into the trauma fields. We are creating this now. And this is where we have to understand, through our consciousness, we have to choose a different way of thinking and a different way of being. Because it's true, and because if we continue to believe the distortion, to believe what we are seeing physically, experiencing physically, witnessing in the physical as the truth of all that there is, we continue to tie ourselves down, anchor ourselves down into the trauma. And it's just not true. And it's one of the hardest things. So I was thinking the other day, um, there are beings who can come into this reality and, and their work is not in the human experience. Their work is in the physical experience, right? So we can have, um, you know, these, these wonderful artists, creators, designers, whatever, um, come in, create beautiful works of art or architecture or design, you know, something very profound and impactful in this world. And we look at that and we say, well, what the heck is wrong with me that these creators can come in and accomplish this within the system? And so we come up with all these ideas of, well, maybe they're working within distortion and maybe they're profiting off of it and da 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 da. And, and maybe that's true, but maybe they also didn't come here to work with the human, to work with the DNA, to work with the biology the hardest thing we will ever do, the hardest task is to convince a person that they are greater than what they believe. Because through the human, we don't believe things until we're shown something to the contrary. So, so who goes first? Who proves that our thought processes are wrong? Who proves that there's a better way? 
who proves that we are more powerful than we believe we are? Are we waiting for the proof? Or are we going to embody that? And show the way. And it's challenging because in order to fully understand and see the distortion, we have to step fully into our light. And yet we don't want to step fully into our light because we don't truly believe we are the light because there is so much distortion. Because if I'm so distorted and I'm struggling, how can I be the light? It doesn't make sense. Look at this other person who's doing better. There must be something about them that I'm not getting, that I'm not understanding, that I am not. And yet, this whole process exists and happens simultaneously. It's not a linear process. It's not first I understand this, and then I can go on, and then I can know I'm, I am the light, and then I can embody it. It's all happening, happening simultaneously in this moment, and yet, because of time, it feels like it has to be a step-by-step -step process. It is this symbiotic conversation and relationship between our human, between our soul, between this greater soul tribe, solar tribe we are connected to. And we get a little bit and we move and we figure it out and we forget and we reintegrate and it's, it's continuously shifting and refining itself. Through the human, the only way we can understand things is like this, which is why the more we are in the mind, in the linear energies, the more challenging it's going to become because source is coming in, the light is coming in, the distortion is getting dismantled. And if we are trying to make sense of the world through political parties, through what is right and wrong, through what is red and blue or black and white, it's not the truth of what the energies are. That is a dismantling of systems affected by distortion. I was talking with a friend this morning and it came up about, again, these currents, right? Current events and all the things were being triggered and distracted by right now. Um, and I saw it as this enormous black kind of tidal wave of energy kind of crusting over us. It's like this impending doom um, that we can see, we're perceiving, and, and so much so it becomes so visceral, we can actually feel that wave crashing down on us before it even happens. And yet that's the physical that we are seeing. It's that human limited understanding and what our soul really needs to do is dive down to the base of that wave. Why is that wave crusting there in the first place? What is underneath within the seabed that's causing that wave to ripple at that specific point? And this is our work as light beings, is not to be tricked, confused, distracted by the wave. Where is that ripple in the fabric of the reality that's causing that disturbance in the first place, right? And to dive deep down into there. Because again, what we are feeling and perceiving as suffering is something that needs to be released because there's a part of us underneath of that, underneath that, that needs to be opened up and revealed, right? So these compression points, it's as if our blueprint, right, got folded in half in and squished into this little tiny square point. This is where we collect the trauma. We're targeted specifically here because these are our gifts. These are our skills, excuse me. This is our light, our potency, our most potent parts of ourselves are still hidden underneath the trappings of the trauma. So where we're feeling resistance, where we're agitated, where we want to walk away, that's not the answer. It's to come in fully, to experience the energy, right? So the other day I was feeling great sadness and someone had made, you know, I had a conversation, some comments were made um, about children, about childbirth, about women's bodies. And I was so completely triggered, not able to understand 
of course I don't want more children, but where's this grief and the sadness coming from? Where is this feeling of being just totally disrespected and disregarded and, and tossed out coming from? It didn't make any sense, you know, but I had to go into those emotions, fully pull up everything in this lifetime related to it, spread it all out, because the trauma of this life, whatever's there, it's like a magnet, it collects there. We have to take that, um, it's like in science class, you used to have those like metal shavings, right? You had to, they, they were magnetized. It's like cleaning the, those lead shavings, you know, off of this magnet point to get to the place where we can release this magnetized trauma field. And, and, and once I allowed myself to fully express, and this is how these sacred relationships work, these partnerships, I had to allow myself to fully express every emotion I was feeling, even if it didn't make sense, even if I was ashamed about what I was saying in order to uncover this. And once I did that, the light is able to come in and then bring to the surface, the source, the origin of what's underneath there, which is not even related to this lifetime, is related to energy that was anchored in past lifetimes. And then we were traumatized around that. So it's not a first this and then that. It's a simultaneous multi-step process. This is multi-dimensionality, right? We're doing in real time. And this is the thing, like it used to be just, okay, we are human having to understand our shadow. Totally different ballgame now. It's all happening simultaneously. So these emotions we're feeling, only a small part of it is what's happened in this lifetime. And we have to dive underneath this wave, what we are perceiving as impending doom and darkness to collect all the pieces that we need to release this, to move beyond it and to open up into our full capacity. So this time right now is so vital and so potent and so important disconnect from what's going on in the world. I mean, yeah, we're having our experience, right? Which is still showing us where we're holding these trauma things. So, um, but knowing if you are being triggered, if there are things going on, it's because yes, it's happening in the physical, but there's more to it than that, right? So really dive in and unravel the emotions that you're feeling in relation to that, but don't get pulled out into that dynamic thinking that is what is, um, that's what needs fixing. That's not what's fixing. What is triggering you there? Bring it in here, open it up, unroll your blueprint and see what rises to the surface. But the only way this happens is if, is if we are fully and completely honest with ourselves and authentic. And again, this is the way of the light. No stone is left unturned. So it will happen. If we're not there, we're going to continue to feel that pain and suffering and resistance which is going to cause us to dive deeper. So it can't not happen, but yet we can be in resistance and we can make the experience much worse than it needs to be. This is the purpose of why we're here now. And we need to remember this. It's about reclaiming these places where our knowing was snuffed out, where the truth of who we are was overshadowed. It's a full remembrance and reawakening of who we are through the body. It's profound, it's intense, unfamiliar. We're having to feel our way through it and learn as we go. There's no manual for this. And there can't be a manual because it's a process of embodiment. And this is the joy of it. This is the journey of it. The experience of it is in the physical. We have to walk this path. And in doing so, we show that there's a different way. We embody it not just for ourselves, but for everyone else as well. And, and that's the mission and that's the work and that's why we're here. I'm going to leave this here. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Take good care.